Okay, now that we're recording, let's go ahead and call the uh, City Board of Orchard Finance Committee meeting of July 19th to order. Okay. And we've got, uh, I guess the first thing on the agenda is the water rate discussion. Um, not sure, Katie or Mayor or somebody? So Katie, I think uh, we were going to tag team this a little bit. I'll start with an introduction and, and then kick it over to you to do the presentation. Great. So for tonight's discussion, um, we just want to bring uh, some information to the finance committee and then the study session later tonight. Uh, we're still working through the analysis, still working through the rate study, but we just met with the utility last week, the utility committee last week, who asked really good probing questions. Uh, so we kind of want to just keep the council moving along with us. Um, so we're going to cover as much uh, baseline information, and then um, we'll tee it up for the study session tonight, and we're going to continue to have this conversation over the next month or so as we talk about utility rates. So with that, Katie, do you want to start tonight? Should, you should be able to share your screen. All right. Oh, yeah, that just cleared. Here we go. <clears throat> All right, is that good for you? Yes. Yep. Okay, I know you have a busy agenda tonight. So we're, as Noah said, we're giving the update on the rate study that we've been working on. Uh, we want to look at the financial. Can you guys outlook. hear me now? Yes. It does. All right, I gave up on my headset. Sorry about that. Oh, that works good. Uh, we want to talk about the capital improvements program and the rate structure, potential rate structure adjustments for conservation. Uh, and we met with the utilities committee last week and um, we are here tonight. So uh, the American Water Works Association is the industry standard uh, association, AWWA. Every year they do a um, survey of industry uh, experts and to see what are the top challenges, what's coming up, you know, wh what are the concerns? And what I thought was interesting for you was the top three challenges are the renewal and replacement of aging infrastructure, financing of capital improvements, and long-term drinking water supply availability. And just to let you know that you're right, uh, typical with everyone. These three elements are very prominent here in um, Port Orchard, as well as other utilities, and are being addressed in the water system plan and the rate study here, what we're doing. So you're right on track. Um, the goals, it's important, uh, I think, to have the goals of the rate study as um, they're the core that drive our outlook. And we wanna be sure that we can make sure the utility meets its obligations. And we're, um, the last time you did a five-year rate, uh, a, adopted, it was a table in the code. And the thinking is to do that again this year. And so we wanna go out at least that far and we wanna look at operations, debt, capital and reserves and make sure that our rates can pay for all of those in the future. Uh, we wanna look at the recommended capital improvement plan that was in the comp plan. And so CIP are the capital improvements and it was adopted in the comp plan uh, and we're using that same. Uh, we want to be sure that we're promoting conservation of water. And we took some steps in the last rate period and uh, would like to take more steps this time. And along those lines to increase equity among customers. Uh, and we can do this by adjusting the rate structure. So, uh, I like to give you a sense of how important the rates are to the water utility and that your uh, water sales, meaning the base rate and the volume rate, account for 98% of the water revenue. So it's important that we uh, have things right and are comfortable with it because that's going to be the future of the utility. And when we look at the water sales for 2022, 75% uh, came from residential, 21% from commercial, and 4% from irrigation. The rest was inspection, reviews, and planning services, or uh, rent. 
Now, looking at your six year outlook, I like the pictures. Um, we're trying to take everything into account. So the big uh, bar at the bottom, the, the uh, blue portion is your operating expenses. And our base year in the model is our 2022 budget. And we've made adjustments for known changes. The red sliver is your existing debt. And then the green and the purple on top. These together is how you're going to pay for your capital improvements, either um, out of rates and reserves or the, the part along the top is new debt for CIP. And then when we take a look at our capital improvement program, I, I believe you've seen all the projects before, but I, I put them here and the colors indicate the funding source. So those that are indicated in um, orange is what is the intention to borrow. And these will be repaid with rates or capital facilities charges, depending on how that allocation was put together. And that allocation is in the comp plan, it's in the CFC calculation, and now we bring it um, to the rate portion. Uh, those that are in purple are ones that will uh, come from new development. Either the developer or uh, new development will pay through capital facilities charges. And the ones that are in green are ones that are intended uh, to be paid for by rates and reserves. And this is the existing customer portion. So just to give you an idea, we have tried to put together replacement programs so that the utility can um, collect from rates every year and make progress annually on these uh, important uh, replacements. So we have PRV improvements. We have uh, main replacements that were called out in the hydraulic model. We have an annual main replacement program. You have lots of mains that are from between one and four inch, and they need to be upgraded to six to eight inch. Uh, and along that, so we get money every year in the budget coming from rates. And then the city prioritizes how to spend that. Uh, the Bay Street water main replacement will be the first project uh, to be used. And so the first few years, that will take uh, several years of the annual amounts to be able to pay for the Bay Street. Uh, you also have annual valve replacement and hydrant replacement program. So these is how, uh, this is how you will be addressing and keeping up with of the needs and the um, improvements and particularly system replacement. So when we put that all together, our five-year outlook showed that the base rate that's currently 8150 would need to increase $2 per month each year, or you do two-month bill, so that's $4 per two-month bill. And uh, by doing so, you could pay for uh, the capital improvement uh, and the new debt anticipated, uh, and the water fund balance would meet the policy, including your cash flow reserve of three months of operating expense. Now, a little uh, new element in this time is uh, we heard the potential utility tax increase of 3% from 5% to 8%. So our base model, this base uh, analysis includes that. If um, that were not to be the case and the utility tax stayed the same, it would be a difference of 50 cents per month. So that gives you some idea. And then the, while I'm demonstrating what happens to the base rate, uh, please understand that the water usage rates and the larger meter sizes would also be adjusted uh, in proportion. So let's talk about um, strengthening. Before we move on, can we just pause there? I just want to give Please. a chance to ask any questions on the prior slide. Because again, what we've done at this point is we've put together the financial plan the next 10 years, but we're focused primarily on the next five and looked at the expenses and the needs of the utility system, uh, the forecasted revenue, and what additional revenue would be required to meet the financial obligations of the system. I have one question when you calculated the forecast, is that based or did you include any growth in the uh, customer's base or is that flatlined? 
No, we included growth. Uh, that was, I don't have a slide with that, but we could get that to you. It's uh, was in, based on the permitting activity that is in place and from community development. And we have two, we've split it out this time, uh, John. We have one line that uh, one assumption says when they will pay the capital facilities charge. Right. And then we have a different one of when they will become rate payers because we expect there to be uh, significant. We're talking um, maybe two and 300 in some years. And so we want to be sure that we are uh, reflecting that as best we can. Okay, thank you. And then as far as <clears throat> this appears to be the base rate, where is the revenue for people that use more than the base rate? How, where, where's that being calculated? Uh, it's not reflected in this, but as we um, move further on and we talk about potential changes to the rate structure, I think you'll see what happens. Okay. And <clears throat> my question was, when was the last time we had an increase in our base rate? 2020 was the final year of that prior plan. Okay, so we haven't had an increase in the last two essentially years. the last two years. Okay. Yeah. What was that date, Noah? 2020 was the okay. last bid increase year. And so, yes, we did factor in growth in our customers that are going to be paying the monthly utility bills or bi monthly. And uh, DCD did factor in uh, growth in our CFC revenue based on new connections coming in to help support the capital plan. And we did factor in growth on inflation and expenses. Now, I wouldn't say it was as large as what we're experiencing, but there are some uh, inflationary costs in the expense side as well. And is this through 2027, assume we're still using Bremerton water? And paying for that, um, I can. I think I can speak to that um, if I if I may. Uh, we have shut off the connection that feeds the 260 zone or downtown Port Orchard because now that we have full treatment on Well Nine and Well Seven fully functional, we haven't needed that water from Bremerton, so we're using it only as an emergency source. And of course, the, and the 580 zone where we receive water from the city of Bremerton. It's in uh, exchange for paying off the yeah. amount they're yeah. going to be paying yeah. us. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So essentially, we think at this, if we did not change anything structurally in our structure, a <clears throat> uh, $2 per month increase on the base rates, and this is the second tier base rate, would, would, would fund the plan. You know, that's, so we also have a lower tier, which would also increase two dollars per month. And this is a one fifty. And this plan plan also increases the utility tax, which is a separate discussion about the road preservation program uh, by two percent. Which you can see here, it affects um, about fifty cents a month for the average customer. I guess that brings into the question that we had the potential of some bringing in some uh, West Sound utility yep. customers. Yep. That's a that's a separate discussion that we can have. It's not okay. part of this. That, right. I didn't know if this impacted that impacted this or not. No. Well, that would be simply adding to the utility tax, which the mayor is proposing to allocate to road improvements. So it really wouldn't. Do what it is. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Please continue, Katie. Thank you. Yeah. No. Great. So, uh, here's where we're going to talk about these potential adjustments to the rate structure to strengthen that message to promote conservation. Uh, for those that weren't here last time, we tried to make some adjustments in there to bring in, a, um, make your tiers better reflect usage. Uh, and now we're talking uh, the next steps that could be taken. Um, the reason we would want to is we can move closer towards the true conservation rates. We can increase equity among customers so that those that pay more I mean, those that use more will pay more. We can uh, allow customer bills to reflect their efforts. And so currently you have a base rate that includes 5,000 gallons. If somebody uses 4,000, their, their rate, their bill doesn't change. 
uh, and uh, the city is working on with a foster uh, and this having a stronger message would allow you to receive points towards foster. So here we're talking on the residential rate structure. Um, here uh, is what your current uh, rates are, but for a base rate, you have a two part base rate now. One step is if you use to 3000 gallons, you pay 5350. If you use between 3001 and 5000 gallons, you pay 8150. That's a big step up for 2000 gallons. Uh, and that's where we think we could, uh, now that your rates are where they are, we could reduce this uh, base rate, um, start charging, make a combined base rate that started at, went to 3000 gallons. Then you would start paying, everyone would start paying at 3000 gallons. This would allow these customer bills to vary um, down to 3,000 gallons, and then everybody pays for what they are using. Um, and the hope is that that base rate would be allowed to reduce, uh, and you make it up by increasing uh, the volume rates. So when we looked at the other uh, local utilities, um, we have known all along that Port Orchard is higher than those and continues to be. These are based on a typical single family residence using 7,000 gallons for a two month bill. And when I look at the comparison, you have more tiers than the rest, but they seem to be working. Um, you include 5,000 gallons in your base rate and none of the others include any water in the base rate. Saying that another way is they have a base rate and they pay for all the water that they use. Um, our, our suggestion would be to have a combined base rate and take the step to go to 3000 gallons included in there. Um, then your range of water would be uh, amongst the others. So that was our thought and it would help bring you um, closer to the others. And by the way, all the others, many may also be increasing in 2023. Some of these um, increase every year. And so um, this is just a comparison of this year's. Yes, Lisa, John? Let me ask a question. Mm -hmm. What would preclude us from going to the same type of uh, pay for what you use like these other systems are doing? Just have a flat base rate and then so I think that I think that's a, a good question. And what we we know is that every time we're restructuring and we're changing that, there's a lot of dynamics that come into play. And um, while that might be nice, it's what it's going to do is have a big, a, a larger impact on the volume rates. And we're uh, we we've talked back and forth in the group. And the group is including, you know, public works, finance, and community development. And of, of course, uh, the mayor is weighing in. And it just seemed like that was too big of a step. There would be too much pressure go over to the usage rates. And those high use customers would be paying much, much more uh, to do so. So we thought doing the combined would be a, a reasonable step on the way. In these other systems, is their gallonage rate the same regardless if it's the first gallon or the 10,000 in first gallon? Same. No. Mm -hmm. uh, um, actually, no, everyone is different. And what I tried to represent here, by the way, you're the only of these utilities that uses gallons. And of course, every utility has to be self-sufficient on its customer base. Uh, and everyone has a different system, but also uh, you have to use the meters that you have and the billing software. So I've converted everything here to per thousand gallons at the low end of the range and the high end of the range. And um, you see that, say, for example, Gig Harbor, they have only one tier. Everyone pays three fifty four. dollars For Kitsap PUD, their low tier pays $1.92. And their high goes pays 1059. 
Well, you currently How do they distinguish low from high, you know. Uh, they have tiers. They have four tiers. Uh, I, I'd fun? have to look in more detail to tell you what those numbers are. Everyone has a different structure and definition of what those tiers are, how many there are. So, John, to answer your question, the, the, the price per gallon adjusts at each tier. Right. And you can see that the, so it varies from utility to utility, how many tiers they have, and some only have one tier. And I see Jackie has her hand raised. I think she might have something to input in this. Yeah, um, thank you, Mayor. The, so the most expensive water for us to produce is the last drop. So that's why the rates go up as um, a user uses more. And um, as Katie was saying, Public Works, DCD, and Finance, and the Mayor, we went back and forth with this. Um, and I, Public Works was advocating for exactly what you were saying, John, doing away with any water usage in the base rate. But um, we finally compromised and said, you know, that's probably too, as Katie said, it's probably too much of a change all at once. Um, I think that that's what our goal is to get there eventually, but we were going there in increments. Well, why is the price for the last drop more expensive? Because the whole system has to be built for that drop of water. The whole system has to be sized for that last drop of water, including water rights. But isn't it already there? Isn't it all kind of well, fixed expense at this point? It's not, oh, no. John, because we don't have enough in our peak times when we're exceeding our capacity, we're buying it for Bremerton or we're looking to build more wells. So if, right. we, can, if, if we can save water, then we can produce, build less infrastructure. Right. Well. That was foster releases and we can get rid of, yeah. 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 Cause the other thing that makes me a little bit nervous if we go just to the straight usage and this is kind of the great irony is the volatility if people decide to really take a, a, a move towards conservation we're reliant on those people using more water. If that's well, factory that's, that's, that's the budget. major power approach, right? Charge more for power. So think, when you use less, you charge I, even greater. I like what Amy power. is saying. I take a blended approach because I think it offsets some of that risk. Yeah, we we we've, we've gone all over the place in, in the in the extreme model where we rent to to zero. We had to increase the base rate too because remember we got the capital plan to, to hedge against that, Sean. We have. Yeah. A certain amount of dollars that we need to raise for our capital plan but let's but let's hold our question it. here for a few minutes and let katie get through the presentation because i think some of our questions may get answered okay well i would just make a comment that the conservation issue is going to be there regardless mm -hmm. if i'm in an upper till and i could save a couple of gallons to drop me down one tier, i'm going to do that so it would but if we're spreading out more of the base to the whole population that is less volatile well, you have a flat base to everybody that I mean. everybody would be based on how many gallons. Sure. No different than gas company or power company that charge you per kilowatt hour. So, okay. Go ahead, Katie. I, I do think, while I didn't talk about it, it is uh, important to realize that the money that you get from your base rate is more fixed in nature and uh, it's more variable on the volume side. And so by going in between, uh, we're taking a step towards there, let everything get settled down and um, have good, know that impact on the customers and then take another step it is the thinking. Right. Uh, but our larger meter sizes, let's talk about those. Uh, so right now you have a section in the code that says multifamily and larger meter sizes. Um, you have a base rate by meter size, um, and we would like to uh, continue, uh, make adjustments and improvements on that. So your multifamily residential, um, if we were to do this, is base rate per unit. Right now, that's what you're doing, plus you charge a meter differential, um, and it include, then it would include 3,000 gallons. So these are under residential. And what we um, would suggest in our adjustment would be they continue to get a base rate per unit, no meter differential. We're just gonna be, give them the base rate per unit. They'd get 3000 gallons per unit and the billing system accommodates this. 
and they would be under residential. Then for non-residential, and you have categories like commercial, government, irrigation, and other non-residential, this is where continue to have a base rate by meter size, include your 3,000 gallons per meter. But what uh, an improvement would be to have the base rates using the AWWA industry standard meter equivalencies. And I'll show you uh, more about that in a second. And then we'd have the water usage rates would be the same as residential. So right now, here is uh, your total 2022 is your rate. And this is a base. Everyone pays 8150 base. Plus, then you have a second a separate table for meter differential that goes up. I, I put them together here uh, for this uh, comparison. And if we say a one inch meter um, divided by the 8150, it's 1.07. And so every meter size is larger and they pay you know more than that um, in the base rate. The six inch meter is 4.39 times your three quarters inch meter, which is your standard residential meter. If we were to use the AWWA uh, meter equivalency factors, the one inch meter would be 1.67 times the three quarter inch meter. And these are based on capacities in the, in the meters uh, and how that they, you know, they can, their demand is placed on the system just by turning that on. So the system has to be sized to provide that uh, at any given time, whether or not they're using it. Uh, and it's uh, quite common for utilities to use these standard factors. And as you go up the meter size, uh, they get larger and larger and it's based on that capacity. So the six inch meter where currently your base rate is four times, it, you know, they're talking 33 times. Now, if we uh, were to end up with being able to reduce that base rate, then we're not saying it necessarily um, would go up 33 times, but the right, we would make sure that they're in um, proportionate order. And we would recommend going uh, to that AWWA factors. Um, so really, today where we are is for getting your input on do we keep the current rate structure or do we make adjustments toward conservation. And we're working on data um, right now, your billing system, which I'm appreciating, uh, the, the is, was not available the last time we did this. And we came up with some good ideas on how to um, make these structure changes. And we've been able to test them in the billing system. And that data is just coming out right now. So we want to evaluate and make sure that everything, we can meet all the obligations before we have a particular uh, proposal. I think we can't, we're not prepared to ask you for a recommendation, I think tonight. I think we've given you the information if we, what it looks like if we stay with our current structure. I think we still have some homework to do to show you the effects as we, if we try to change the other model. And I think we need to bring some examples back to you guys so you can show, we can show you what it looks like. Otherwise, we're asking you to make a, a decision in a vacuum. And I don't think that's fair. Um, Katie, back to your last slide with those, um, AWD at 33.33%. Is that because there's 33 times the amount of water volume that could go through that six inch meter than that of a three quarter inch meter? Is that how that's calculated? That's correct. Yeah, Jackie, I'll let you. Yeah, that's correct. That's what yeah. I was thinking. And so even if we lowered the base rate, I think that factor would still be there, which would be less dollars. Correct, correct. Yeah. Okay, got it, thanks. It, in fact, uh, if we were to use this, um, that's exactly how the uh, spreadsheet would be, you know, set up so that whatever your base rate is, you would make your adjustment to your base rate and these others would calculate accordingly. Yep, yep. Okay, thank you. 
in my mind, I could certainly see an argument for the base rate being different based on the size of the meter. Obviously, you need a much smaller main. Of course, you can only get down to so small to feed a three quarter inch meter versus a six inch meter. You're just going to have to have a bigger infrastructure to provide it. But still, you know, I go back to okay, you pay a bigger base rate for the bigger meter, and then you pay based on your usage, which presumably your usage would be much higher in a six inch meter. Otherwise, why would you have a six inch meter? Right. And do we have a good inventory? Like, if we were to spreadsheet this out and model it in two or three different ways, do we know exactly how many of each meter type we have so we can get a real accurate look at this? Yes, we're working on it. Okay. Yeah, I think those are the things that I would like to see yep. is kind of how do these different options pencil out? Where yep. is that impact? You indicated, yeah. Katie, there's a, there'd be a great impact if we went to a flat usage, you know, based with the usage. Yep. What does that mean? Yeah, it, be an impact. It would be great to have real life examples of like, this is what it does to a school. Yeah. Here's what it does to this apartment complex, to this yes. bank, to this office building, and to this these um, types of single complex yeah. or yeah and real right. real water bills i said I, I pulled up my water bill just to see what we were talking about how much my usage was just my wife and i you know just out of curiosity so you're right that's the type of questions we need to know who's being impacted some rates are going to go some people are going to pay less some people are going to pay more who are who are and, and the more you put over to usage, the more variability any customer can have, because it will reflect, say, if you're watering your garden in the summer months and you're not in the winter, then your uh, bill will go back down after the summer. And so will the need for water to supply them would go down. So, I mean, it's kind of relative. But we are, we are trying, I, I assume... Then we are trying to move toward some form of conservation to save sure. water. And we just got to build time. in the, right. the lack of rate that we'd be receiving. If, if our goal was well, to reduce by 5%, then we're going to shoot up 5%. I, I think in my pea brain, it is this is how much money we need. Right. How do we divide that bucket up? But at the end of the day, yeah. we need this much money. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. So some people will pay less, some people will pay more, but in the end, we're going to yeah, have that. Money. Absolutely. But I know that you talk about simplifying something. You can push conservation people toward conservation so much. What happens with the gas? You know, the the gas tax, state gas tax, which people started driving, le you know, less or more efficient cars, and then you know where did you know they, they started going in the hole? Not the hole, right. but. So we have to build that, you know, if we're pushing toward conservation, we still have to make that amount of money up somewhere. But that's where the future power approach is. At the end of the day, we still need this much that's money to run the system. You just could pay more per gallon than yeah. what you used to because everybody's saving. But it, it, again, in my mind, you charge more to use less water. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> is it that future power? It's like the gentleman that comes in and doesn't use his, the garbage collection. But yeah. But he still pays. But, you know, there's, you and your wife is a good example, or there's single, you know, Jerry comes in and tells us about, she uses a cup full of water a month. Yep. She's going to pay significantly less. Right. Yes. For me, uh, I drink a lot of water. I'm going to pay more. Seems fair. And if I want to try to cut my, she's not going to be able to cut hers down any lower, much lower than hers, but I have an opportunity to conserve because I'm a better user. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, okay, great. Thank more you. More homework. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to bring better back some version. examples. It, it, if you, it, it probably, we're going to, Katie's going to show the same presentation tonight at the, at the work study. And then what our plan is, is to come back at the August uh, meeting, August 9th meeting, I believe it is, and uh, have a presentation. And we won't dive in, since we've already covered the, we'll have already covered the, you know, the status quo model, we'll be showing you examples and talking about the consumption models and, and, and uh, relevant examples for you guys to give us further direction to, to advance this. Sounds good. Okay. Great. Good night. I'll let you keep going. All right. Thank you. Ultimately, our goal is to have this body of work wrapped up by the before the end of the year. 
and have the new rate structure going into effect January 1st, I believe is our goal. Perfect. You're gonna bring up the agenda again. I, I know it's sales tax is the next item, so. All right. Okay. Such a memory. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to try to get back on track here. It's 530. I'm sure we have time. So I'm um, bringing up sales tax and then we'll quickly go through fund balance. I just want to mention that uh, I pushed out the monthly budget report to council last week. So you do have that available. Uh, and then we'll turn it over to Nick and Jackie. So real quick, looking at sales tax, I shared this earlier um, and, and discussed this with several council members. Uh, June was a very good month in sales tax collections. $682,000. And uh, as uh, Councilmember Charlie has pointed out, it looks like our highest month uh, this year as well as last year. And he's speculating whether that's a historical high as far as sales tax collection. I'd have to go back and look and see if that's true. But overall, great month 15.5% over our uh, 21 June collections, which puts us uh, roughly 10% year to date over our actuals of 2021 and 43% of our current. Um, budget. So our, we've collected 86% of our biennial budget, so well on our way to accomplishing that goal for this period. How much of that number is being influenced by inflation? First, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's your, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah. 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 You're adding, you're adding inflation to inflation. Putting sales tax on a larger number. That's yeah. right. Yep. Yeah. Um, not to go off on a tangent. <clears throat> But just out of curiosity, do we have any idea about what percent or any percent of our sales tax is from outside city um, consumers? How many people travel into, into the city to spend city? their yeah. money? Yeah. That would be tough to calculate. No, yeah. that would be tough. I'll bet it's a big percentage. Well, we only have 16,000 residents of Port Orchard. We probably have 100,000 people spending money well, here. It's probably only, less than 20. Yeah, the only reason that I asked was when we talk about you know, increases in sales tax or stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, we talk about you know, people coming in, you know, for outside pay. It's just that, yeah. I, I think the math I typically mean, default to is the number of people, the residents within South Kitsap School District. Mm -hmm. Is it like 120,000 people That's that live within the, the boundaries? That's a little bit, that, I don't think it's that much. I thought it was over 100,000 like five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we yeah. the student, boundaries. Student, student population. That's student population. No, I don't understand. Yeah. The no, amount of residents. It's not, near, it's not anywhere near that high. The whole county isn't even 300,000. No, yeah, because we're only, yeah, it's only like 275,000 in the county. Okay, and anyway, that's, that's kind of a tangent. But, you know, 40,000 people in our UG. that there are folks from Big Harbor that come up to our Walmart, for example. They don't want to be seen in, I don't know, Tacoma, I guess. <laughs> they don't have a Walmart. In, in the, well, I know they don't have one in Big Harbor, Harbor yeah. but, you know, they come up to, right. to our Walmart. And uh, I know there's a fair amount of folks that come in from outside of the city right. that shop at like Lowell's and places like that. So I was just, it's just curious because yeah. 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 no, yeah. anytime we talk about something, it's just like, how does it impact our city residents? Okay. Yeah. The, big, the biggest okay. influence we've got driving this is our housing construction and, and sales tax on our housing starts. That's That's the biggest driver to this gigantic jumps we're seeing it, it, it there is influence to more people living here but the housing construction is driving a big portion of this okay great so the other piece is REIT uh again like we've talked before we're already over our biennial budgets that's that's great um we actually had a good month um so we've had back to back good months maybe june we collected one hundred ninety thousand dollars, which was roughly forty six thousand more than we collected in June of 2021. So that put us back into a positive position of 2.7% over a year to date actuals. Uh, so that was a good big move for us because I think this was number was negative the prior couple months. Um, so rig continues to be strong and and you know we're preparing for how to spend this going forward. And and all this just flows into our any fund balance. So just show this real quick and again. You have this available to you in the monthly budget report. All healthy fund balances, um, as we sit here midway through our ending fiscal year, um, so nothing really to 
point out again, we've talked about all the other transfers and stuff that we uh, made last month. Um, so all good thing. Big activity here in the current expense fund was actually um, related to the ARPA funds coming in. So you're gonna see that in the monthly budget report also. It, it kind of skews the data just a little bit when you get $1.4 million coming in federal funds. Uh, so I did want to point that out and highlight that. $3 million growth in a month. Outstanding balances. And then we did have a street grant. So again, the grants are shown up here, 600 right. grand. But uh, overall, real healthy fund balances, uh, real good. So with that, I think back to the agenda. Um, Nick, I believe you're still on, I hope. There you go. Yeah, so the first of my items on the agenda tonight is a, a pretty quick question about the budget. Um, in our amended 2022 budget, we included money for two, two planning projects. One of them was the development of the Bethel Sedgwick sub-area plan, and the other one was the development of the critical areas code update, which is a requirement for 2024 as part of our comprehensive plan. And since uh, budgeting those items, number one, we're, we're a little behind schedule on doing a consultant selection. We did interview consultants for that work and have made a selection and are working on a scope. But we also were notified that we would be getting a grant from the Department of Commerce to start our 2024 comprehensive plan update for the entire city's comprehensive plan. And so um, we already have, uh, it's either 140 or $160,000 in the budget, I'd have to go back and look, that was for two out of those three projects. And we did the RFQ or RFP so that we could select the same consultant to do all of this work for us to provide continuity and make sure that all of the these, these different pieces talk to one another. And so my um, what I wanted to run by the finance committee and I've run by the mayor and Noah was making sure that everyone is comfortable with us spending money, uh, even though there's only two projects budgeted, I'm going to reappropriate that for all three projects this year and then carry some of that budget into next year with this grant money that we're getting from the Department of Commerce. And so I don't think it's gonna change the amount of money we're spending, it's only going to change uh, sort of the sequencing of how it gets spent and, and the sub area plans will get partially done this year as well as the critical areas code and then they will get finished in 2023 uh, and 2024 as, as part of our comprehensive plan update so I'm not asking for more money just uh, uh, re reallocating how it is is spent. But it will get spent in 2022. We will, we will aim to spend everything that's budgeted in 2022 to get this project going. And then we will spend Department of Commerce money in 2023 and 2024. And if once I have the cost estimate for the, the consultant, if there's any uh, additional funding needed, it'll be part of the 2023, 2024 budget request. But I, I'm honestly not expecting to need a whole lot of funding. Uh, and if I do need funding, it's gonna be because I couldn't spend all $160,000 this year and we're just reappropriating a 2022 line item. So what could happen is we have contracts awarded. He doesn't spend all the work and we'll have to carry, reappropriate that There's money in, a, in the future budget. I, I don't have a problem with it personally. Okay. I'm good. Okay. okay. Thank you. The only question I would have is, do you want to touch this once or touch it twice? Do you want to just, you know what I mean? Do you want to reappropriate in 2022 and then put it also into the, the budget that we're currently working on or just do it all in the new budget? Well, we, we don't have to change anything in 2022. It's it's I, my department budget is still going to be within its limits. It's just reallocating those kind of uh, subtasks within my budget to different projects, which which we can do administratively. That's not a council change. Right. Yeah. It's it's kind of tracking right now. The 160,000 that's the number would be for two projects. Instead, it's going to be for three projects now. So when 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 we were tracking and West is coming in, we're paying to do these two projects now. We're Okay. Right, thank you, Nick. And then Jackie has a similar request. Um, so Jackie, do you want to talk a little bit about um, Wealth 13 reappropriation for the water needs? Yes, thank you, Noah. Um, yeah, we have identified that on Shroof Street from, um, there's about three blocks on Shroof that um, need to be 
uh, replaced. The water main is undersized and we cannot meet um, required fire flow there. Um, <clears throat> so it's, I'm trying, I'm trying to see the picture here to see if I can share it with you. I've been having lots of computer problems. So um, it runs from Sydney to, um, I think Tacoma is where it ends that we're looking for using the money that's left over from well 13 to at least start getting into the, um, the planning and design for it. And I think we will even have, we will even have enough for construction unless the construction costs go, go way higher. But I would like to reappropriate those funds so that we can get started on that project as the first of our main replacement projects. Yeah. Listen, Jackie, isn't this an old AC main that's failing also? Not only is it undersized. Last time they had a leak on it, it was so the AC on it is so thin that you can actually stick your thumb through it. I used to live at Shrimp in Spokane and that water main broke and it was so old and brittle that it was a big challenge to repair it. Just to try to find two good ends to put in a splice. So. Okay. Exactly. And we have uh, several places in the city that, that I, we have lists of, of lists, basically, of water mains that are either undersized or need to be replaced because of moving the water source up on the hill rather than pumping up um, or because um, of the age and condition of it. So, you know, we, we're, we're trying to, to chip away at it, and this is just the first one. Hey, Jack, I see head's not in, so I'll include uh, that reappropriation same time I do the planning reappropriation. Thank you. All right, flipping back to the agenda now. I believe. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, so we talked several times now, I think, uh, or maybe the last meeting this came up. We talked about uh, keeping off the budget process. And one of the discussions that we had at the finance committee is uh, sales tax revenue assumptions. And you guys have requested looking at a couple scenarios. So I want to get your feedback before I start to build out the revenue because then that's kind yep. of lead off to the whole thing. Uh, <clears throat> sales tax, here we go. Um, so a couple scenarios we're gonna look at are, uh, first I want to put out our actual history. So you can see real, what the sales tax growth has been. So you can see from 2018, we increased 18, 8% over 17, 5% over 18, 8% over 19, and then big jump in 21 over 20. And thus far, um, 5% uh, for 2022. Now I will say that for 2022, since it's not complete, I made the assumption that we will uh, receive what was budgeted. Oh, okay. okay, so. So the 5% is actual today plus what we have budgeted. correct okay. yeah so it's not aggressive it's kind of a more conservative approach mm -hmm. especially yeah. you see that we've been you know we've been over we've yeah, been six over six months of actual plus six months of budget but as yeah. the mayor said a lot of that's due to construction right yeah so so five so five period, the sales tax you're looking at just shy of nine percent yeah so this is actuals plus the 22 with an asterisk which is six months of actuals plus the a six month flat forecast. And I'm gonna bring that to show what the scenarios we're looking at now. Now we're talking about actual budgeting. What do we wanna do? So if here are the few, four scenarios we're looking at using a, a five year average, which is what we have done historically. We look back historically five years and, and use that average to populate going forward for the first fiscal year. And then we put some growth factor on it. And for this scenario, again, I'm using 5% growth for the second year. Uh, the second scenario is a three year average. I think you guys said that five year might be too far back. What's been going on might be more relevant. So we put together a three year and a two year. And like you can see here that the, uh, the first year of revenue increases up as you kind of move towards, uh, which is now another, the fifth alternative, which is a flat, which is take that 2022 20, ending projection, start for 23 and then grow 5% from there. So I got five different scenarios here. Again, we would have traditionally use this to start the budget, the five-year average growth. So we put about $6 million to $7 million is our range of discussion of what everyone feels comfortable with to kick off the budget for sales tax. I personally would be comfortable with that three-year 
Yeah, I like the three year three, average, which is still idea. being somewhat conservative, but also somewhat realistic with what's going on. So. Yeah. Okay. You know, the other thing you can look at doing, I don't know, others not to add comp, but you can take like that three year and go down to like a 4% growth. You think things are going to slow down? I just have to come down 5% top. I think it's going to be more. Right. So reset that base and then make your, your growth a little bit. So because over the last five years, we've been experiencing yeah. average levels. I know. I just feel like we're ahead. Yeah. Yeah. But that, you know, you know, if you go back one yep. slide or two slides, whatever, hang on one more slide. Four. Yeah. That one there, it's just at 2021. 20, that growth is just so high. What was that? That's the eight percent growth. I mean, I'd almost like to throw that year out at you know eight percent and say, hey, if that was you know our five percent, what would that do? Uh, I'm more of the five percent five year, except I realize that may be too conservative, and I'm not sure if you know your three year with four percent and four point five percent may be a better way to go. I just at some point in time, that that twenty twenty one is such an extreme year. It is. Well, so I don't if you take out, out that extreme year, if you just get rid of twenty twenty one, you look at the previous years eight five eight five. Yep. You know, and he's proposing eight, five to go five. Yeah. Yep. Which I think is so exceeding pretty yeah. conservative. Yep. I can live with that. Yeah. I mean, and it's, and it's it. just basically what you're suggesting is adjusting the, the baseline. Mm -hmm. By either looking at a five-year average or three-year right. average, or, and I personally, I think a three-year is. I, I think agree. Because if we leave a million dollars on the table in our budget, it's just less projects that we're going to potentially fund or prepare for. You know, the whole streets preservation. There's other things that if we're being too conservative, we're not doing anybody. Any good. But on the other hand, you don't want to be too aggressive absolutely. because who knows what's going to happen with the the yeah, artwork. Absolutely. Yeah. Nope. Why don't, why don't we go with that more cons that three year and with the five I, I kind of heard and, and no. then start building the budget and if we find things we can always tweak I mean we're, we want a starting place uh, and, that can and go starting and we're place not getting to some of the things we want and then we can yeah. well by the time we get this budget built too we'll have actuals versus you know an estimate too so we'll, well, I would we I can would move it a little bit your goal to build the budget at that three and five, Rob, and then obviously you'll come to us with, gee, we should be great if we could do Absolutely. this in addition to, and then we could kind of talk. Well, about and the other thing that would bump up that a little bit is to add that 5% growth to the next six months, year over year, right? That would change your base. That would change, change your base, base a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's conservative. Yeah. It, 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 it's remaining months at five percent. That's better than the budget. It's still so conservative, and that'll change the base. That'll change the base. Yeah, and we can. I mean, and as as we did in the last annual budget, whatever we set, we will revisit in the mid year review. Yeah. yeah. And okay. this year, when exactly. we did, we said, "Hey, yeah. we're exactly. doing well. We want to commit a lot more dollars to transportation." Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, two -year two -year uh, I could live with that. Yeah. That's the other security blank is to budget to make adjustments on board. Yeah. 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 So, Okay. It's, it's way more fun at the mid-year review to go we're exceeding budget and we can do something more than oh my god we're not making it what how do you know you've gonna... never done it the other way rob <laughs> i know i don't want to have an oh my god <laughs> well let's not do it this time either okay so it sounds like i heard a consensus yeah. start with the three year yes as our place to build budget okay and this graph is just to help. Are you comfortable with so, that? Do you like that? You, you know, know what's your this you is know, art, to use right? an expert yeah. as well. Yeah, I mean, when I look at this graph, looking at the actual history, where does this chart fall? It's, it's fallen in the last couple three years, right? Yeah. Fallen in the range. But if you look at the slope, I think <laughs> it, you know, doubting Thomas, you look at the slope of 17 through through 20, you know, and then you look at the slope of 20 through 22. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, you know, it's a yeah. significant sl yeah, difference in slope. Yeah. Yeah. But I concur right. that it's biannual budget, which is a positive, and two, this is a starting point, not an end point. So yeah. I'm good. It's just, okay. Thank you for listening to my concerns. All right, well, that's what we'll go with to build the budget. Then. And the last topic then we have today is uh, back to Nick Bond on Park Effect. Yeah, so I'm going to share my screen here. Um, 
in your council packet for tonight, um, I, I mostly just wanted to allow the council to or the finance committee to weigh in in terms of a recommendation to the rest of council. And so giving you a, a little preview of what we'll talk about tonight. Um, in the staff report that I will present uh, in a half an hour are the six projects. Really, it's it's three projects, but um, four of them are individual elements of this community center and all the plazas we're planning downtown. And so in the um, in the parks plan, we've identified cost estimates for each of these facilities. And we're, we're talking about $15 million in projects. And I'm guessing this is a, um, you know, between now and 2029 is likely when these projects are, would um, occur if, if everything goes to plan with the community event center and the Bay Street pedestrian path. And then we are, we are actively working to buy that stormwater park property off of uh, Sherman. So starting with an understanding of, of we need about $15 million in funding, and, and some of this may come from grant sources. Uh, you know, you can contribute other uh, general fund dollars if you chose, but I think the preference is to spend park impact fee money on these, on these projects. And so, um, you know, we, we presented an update to the park impact fee, and initially the city council started at a uh, at, a, at a number of charging 70% of the cost of uh, our maintaining our existing level of service to new development. Um, since then, we've heard some public testimony and we reduced that to 57%. And since then, the city council has heard even more comments and has talked about phasing this in. And so one of the things I've done is I have built a, a um, pretty basic model where um, I, at 70% where we started out, I've looked at all of our development projects that I feel pretty certain are going to occur. And I've looked at when they're going to occur. And then I've looked at what the impact fee would be depending on which percentage we choose and when that percentage is implemented. And I've also built in, um, in the first year, because we're seeing high inflation, I, I assumed something along the lines of an 8% uh, adjustment that may end up being high uh, by the time we, we hit March of next year, but 8% this year and 2% thereafter. And what happens here is it- So it, Nick, why, why are you continuing to use 70% when- I'm just showing where we started. So let me let me let's, walk you through. So at 70%. Well, let's, let's not we, we we abandoned that a month ago. So let's just okay, start I'm just showing where we've been. So at, at 70%, ahead. we were at 12 million. If you take it to 57% as a flat uh, uh adjustment to the park impact fee, a one-time adjustment that takes effect later this year, it reduces the total six-year revenue, um, in, including the remainder of 2022 to about 10.6 million. If you then decide to phase this in. Um, with a 35% uh, and then a one-time adjustment to 57% after six months, which would actually, this says 2023, but my proposal is to implement it at February 28th so that when the March 1st CPI adjustment occurs, we don't lose that inflationary adjustment. Um, that reduces the overall revenue over six years to about uh, a little over $10 million. And the final scenario that was in the staff report is, uh, doing a two-step adjustment where you would you would go from 35% to 46% to 57%. And I know that um, in talking to the mayor, he wanted to uh, do a six-month adjustment for each of these. My model assumes we would adjust it in February and then again the following February. So, so this $9.2 million is probably uh, a little low because we, we could phase this in sooner, but we would also have a hard time managing our CPI adjustment because we don't know yet we don't yet know what number we would be adjusting by in March of 2022. So, you know, we started at a little over 12 million. And if we do a two step implementation, we're at about $9.2 million. And, um, you know, this is just an opportunity for you guys to discuss this and make a recommendation to the full council if you, if you chose to before tonight's meeting. Yes, to me, Nick, that looks like a three step. Go from 35 to 46 to 57, whereas a two step is the other one that you had a minute ago. Yep. That one, which personally, this is the one that I was thinking about when we had this discussion earlier, was just giving folks an opportunity to plan for. So we do the first phase on something that is affordable, knowing that coming down the road is going to be the next step, which is ultimately where we want to be. 
So, did, I'm sorry. Did I? It sticks in my mind. I heard. I thought I heard you say that you were okay with the phase approach as long as we receive the money that we needed. So the money we need is not 10 mil, it's really 15 mil. I know. So our, I'm just trying to get a sense of, were we looking at a higher rate in the out years at 57% to, to receive more revenue in? I, you know, in other words, start lower. So Jay, if I may remember, yeah. development's only paying for fifty-seven percent of the of the twelve million. We've got to get grants and put REAP dollars and our other sources into the pot too. We can't actually, that's ask. that's not correct. the The development would be would be raising twelve million dollars. So it's supposed to be raising twelve million dollars. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I misspoke. And, and the reason that I didn't bring forward an alternative that proposed to go higher than 57% is because we are simultaneously negotiating an agreement with McCormick Park, where they're going to build a variety of park improvements, uh, including improvements to McCormick Village Park, but they were aiming after their credit to not exceed a certain threshold. And so if, if we phase this in and exceed the 57%, they're, they're going to become less comfortable with our rate structure and probably look to change the denominator on their, their credit. And so we're going to end up giving more credit per household to McCormick. So I'm trying to, to work through the developer, the broader development community concerns while I'm negotiating an agreement that is, for all intents and purposes, in a, a final draft form at this point. And so if, if this goes higher than 57%, I have to go back to McCormick and uh, renegotiate those terms. So to John's point, you know, all of our point, talking about giving kind of a phased in approach so people can plan for it. What date in 2023 would you move from 35 to 57? Because if it's January 1st, it's probably not enough time to plan for it. Right. We're proposing February 27th because our CPI adjustment then occurs on March 1st. And, and February 27th is a Friday. And then uh, the following Monday, the CPI would be added to this 57% shift. So it would be just one change just separated over a weekend. And that way we wouldn't lose our, our CPI adjustment. Then do you have, if you scroll over, then do you have what the, the new totals are, the current versus yep. what they would go up to? Yes. Oh, so okay. in uh, 2023, it would be assuming an 8% CPI adjustment, the single family rate would be 58.55. The... Um, if you go back to just a 57% across the board in 2022, it was 5421 was the total. And so we may end up with a CPI number that is less than uh, than 8%, but I, I'm, I just threw in a factor just to try to capture some amount of inflation across the six year period. So go back to your 35% one. So that takes it immediately to 3300, right? right. Yep. And what is it today? Remind me. It is eight hundred and eleven dollars for a single family home. And and this next number is important. This thirteen twenty. This is the amount that McCormick would pay after receiving a two thousand and eight dollar credit under the proposed credit agreement. So any houses that come in in McCormick are going to pay significantly less than houses elsewhere in the city because they are building park improvements. They're already building. Yeah, yeah they've already invested yeah, that they they already invested. their park improvements. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and maintain it. Yeah. Well, so based bottom line is we realize we're going to, you know, by not increasing, you know, over this rate that we're going to have a $5 million hole. Um, right. But I, I would remind all of you that the RCO is has pretty decent grant opportunities every two years. They are typically a 50% match, but they're usually capped at either a half a million dollars or a million dollars. And so the, the prospect of us getting, um, you know, at least a million or, or $2 million from the RCO for these projects in the coming years is high. Also, that stormwater park is partially going to be funded by the stormwater utility because that is a, a stormwater uh, plan capital improvement project. So some of the money of developing a, a park there with stormwater facilities to serve that regional basin will, will come out of stormwater. Hey Nick, can I ask, what is in cell M62? We're gonna... uh, the negative 433? Yeah. 
Don't worry about that cell. That uh, that is. Don't worry about that cell. It's a fine master. Yeah, that makes that sense. That housing type is is a Paseo home, I believe, and it is not going to be built prior to 2024. They're just getting ready to start grading that site, but they're at least two years from building permits there. So the credit has at 35 percent. If they built a Paseo home, it would be net. Uh, we'd be upside down, but they they're not planning to do that within this time frame. So take a position or I mean I I, I appreciate what I said before and recognizing that it sounds like the cap is kind of capped because of the negotiations with the farming. Uh and we're damn if we do and damn if we yeah do. and the 35 yeah. I think is reasonable to let people plan for the upper number. And I, I would kind of agree that you know March 1st is is very short time frame, but I we need to do this. Yeah. Well, it's better than but, January. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm not disagreeing at all, John. Yeah. So we're okay with the 3557 yeah, changing in March. Again, I mean, we, now this is the third time we've said we were okay with something, right? I mean, have we measured now three times and we're ready to cut once? Because the last thing I want to do is come back in a month or Whatever, and redo this again because well, we get additional feedback. We're going to so, talk about it again like, here at the some board time and right. see how committed we are to it. <laughs> and so, I guess, you know, no, again, speaking from your position and looking at the future, do you feel like this creates the responsible amount of, of funding to support this plan? Because if you, you know, if you listen to the arguments out there, right? The difference between 35% and 50% right now gets pretty small. And so I think the idea of affordable housing, and you know, I think that's really easy to use that. But if we're we're the only ones discounting, right? The, the, people aren't discounting what they're what they're charging to sell a home from a realtor perspective, right? I don't think general contractors are discounting what they're adding um, as far as markup to, to labor and materials, right? And so it's kind of the point I was trying to make a week ago is it's like, you know, we can't, we got to also do what's best for our, for our city. And so there's a pretty small difference and if we're going to be upside down, then I think we need to understand that. So I would love your professional feedback or opinions or guidance as well. Hey, Sean, we're responding to your guys' request. We came forward with 57% and there was outcry from the building community so we're giving you guys alternatives. Of course, we want to build these facilities and have enough money, but we, we're trying to be responsive to, to the testimony we got and your guys' request to give oh. you phased alternatives. And I hear you, but a week ago, we weren't talking about these other grants that we've just learned that maybe we could get a million or $2 million for, which could be deducted from right, what we're trying to raise. Well, the other well, thing I've been thinking just, about here is that we still got a $5 million hole. Well, yeah. and we've also got a few more years ahead of us. We're not going to have all these projects done next year. Right. So when we get a more accurate price on pick one of those projects, maybe we're going to come back in 24 or 25 and say, you know what, we need to ratchet this up or we can ratchet it down or we can stay. What we were looking for was to give them a planning number. Right. And as with other impact fees, we've been playing catch up and being able to give people a number that's consistent right. with CPI. So we're biting the bullet here, realizing we well, have a hole. We have a hole that we're hoping to fill with grants and other funding opportunities. Right now, this is probably the best alternative to allow people to move forward. Right. The, 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 yeah. the, the bad thing about this model is if we all look at our crystal balls, right? Yeah. The most likely homes to be built are those over the next six to eight months. And then things become to a you know, screeching halt. And if we lose velocity on those actual home builds, then this whole model is out the window. Exactly. Exactly. So we have to really shot ourselves in the foot. Yeah. But on the other hand, you can't try to plan for that. In charge them too much now and then come back in six months and say, oh, we're just kidding, we get the lower account. So either way, yeah. we're going to be faced with this challenge. We, of that we, foggy we, may, we may lose a development or two. I don't think so. 
Yeah, I, I'm not sure. But it's, it's taking it from 57 to 35. Is that the right number? What if we take it from 57 to 45? Yeah. Yeah. So, are we going too deep on this first tranche? So what, what how would how Nick and I, yeah. so here, here's how we, I'll give I'll show you the, the secret sauce and how we came to that number was I told I told Nick that For we to build to build build this model based on we knew we were negotiating a credit with McCormick and we couldn't go backwards for the first period. So we wanted to be ahead of where we're at slightly and be able to offer the credit. So that's that's the magic, that's how we magically came to that percentage because we backed into it. And then, then the 57% is what we were prepared to do because that's part, that's the negotiation with McCormick. Because that came to the, that got us to the number that McCormick was comfortable with. Is it opinion. meaningful? Nick, can you bring it up real quick? What is it meaningful if you went 45-57 instead of 35-57? Um, yeah, let me. Come on. There we go. 200,000. Oh, yeah. There we go. So it, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's about $250,000. I think if, you, if you're at 57 across the board, you're at 10.5 million. 10.6, something like that. Well, you started at 93, so it raised oh, a yeah. dollars. So it's about $300,000 um, oh, yeah. in total revenue if you go, no, if you only raise it to 45. No, I'm saying if we raised our starting tier from 35 to 45, we pick up another million dollars. No, you only, you only pick up about 300,000. So, so if no. you, um, if right now this is at 57% across the board, your total revenue is 10.6. If you go to 45 for no, the, the 35, the difference between 35 and 45. Yeah. So you drop by 300,000 here. And then I think you drop another 30, another $300,000 if you go to 35. So it's oh, okay. there you go. It's a little about, over a half a million. About, yeah. About quarter to 300. Drop. You okay. tell us the number, we'll plug it in, but that 35 is the minimum we need to be at because we drop. can't, go, we don't want to go backwards. And 57 is the top end based on the negotiation with McCormick. We can play with anything in the middle. We started at 70, it's almost 50%. I'm okay. I'm so I, yeah, I, I don't mean to be spineless, but I, I, I could go 45. I think, you know, the idea was is that we're trying to, to help um, the folks that it's such a huge increase from where we are today to get 35 or 40, 45 feet. But at least it's less than 57. <laughs> way less than 70. Yeah, well, way sure. less than 70. So, shall we just say that we're, we're kind of wrestling between 35 and 45? And whoever split the baby so we could bring a recommendation for tonight and try to avoid some debates. I'd go with 45 or 40. I'd go with 45. No, I'd go with 45. Let's go 45. Yeah. Okay. I'm All right. Put down 40 so, All right. 45. And it's now 614. So we've got. Okay. I have, I have two requests, if I can. One, John, this is awkward here and not being in the room. So can you facilitate the meeting tonight? Me? Yeah. Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah. I'd, I'd be happy mayor, to. Do mayor Pro Tem is in Wisconsin and your mayor is in Ocean Shores. Yeah, I, I'm fine with the council. You guys want to do rock, paper, scissors? I don't care. But. No, fine. <laughs> doesn't matter. No. <laughs> and Noah, can you hang out for two minutes here and see if I can get my headset to work? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do a right. real quick. All right, Jeremy. Thanks for Stay awake. <laughs> Just hang on a minute here and see if I can get this.